Hey everyone, welcome to the second episode of the Warrior Walkthrough. I'm your host, Matt Gagnon, also seen on Fantasy Factor. There's a lot of great segments today, so let's start off by sending it to Kelly Corrigan of the Warrior Sports Report, who will look at some of the Merrimack sports teams and how they did recently. Kelly? Thanks, Matt. To start things off, the Warriors men's basketball team had a huge start to their season this week with a win on Tuesday night at home sweeping the visiting opponent, Emerson College. The team came out with a 77-48 win over the Lions, gaining a positive start to their record this season. The team's junior forward, Jordan Miner, was able to knock down 21 points and had 7 rebounds. The men's hockey team was able to take the win over number 14 ranked Boston College during their second matchup of the weekend against the Eagles. The Warriors' 4-3 win can be attributed to Philip Borsmark's swift shot to solidify the game for the team. In other news, freshman netminder Hugo Aulis got his second collegiate start against the Eagles and picked up his first win with 27 saves including 12 in the third period to keep Merrimack alive. He was later named Pro Ambition's Rookie of the Week. And that's all we have for this week's Warrior Sports Report. Back to you, Matt, in the studio. Basketball starting their season off like that is amazing, and for hockey, it doesn't get much better than beating a division rival in their own arena. And a big congrats to Hugo Olas, earning Rookie of the, earning rookie of the Week is a big confidence booster, and that stats definitely show that he earned it. Well, on the topic of men's hockey, let's get into our second segment of the show, where we'll get a glimpse inside a Merrimack men's ice hockey practice, as Olas' teammate, Liam Walsh, was mic'd up. You look slow today, 13. Going. That's a criminal bounce. Yeah. Hopefully they've uh. You might be a root your floor kind of guy. I've actually been crazy. Yeah, might get a little crazy. Your floor. There's nothing better than root your floor. Handle it. Handle it. I've been using your diet, it hasn't been working. Did they cut your hair in the dark or did they mean to do that? I was gonna save the shavings for, you get, uh, for the hairline. Did you get a receipt or not? I got the face for radio, they don't see me. <laughs> Benny paid off Cobra today. Oh. Spin cycle. That's quick feet. That's quick feet. You're my house now, bud. Oh, nine is I need a one here. Earned a Pepsi after practice today. Maybe saucer? Question mark? Plus 600, huh? Oh! Oh, that did not feel good. Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? Who's out here asking for a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? I don't know what that means. Oh. Yeah, three, one, two, three. Oh. That was pretty cool to watch. I'm sure Liam wasn't too happy when he found out the soft serve machine was broken, though. Now let's shift to a more national sports focus, where Nicole Fasciano gives us the latest updates on the world of professional sports. Nicole? Thanks, Matt. To start things off, the New England Patriots had a much-needed win over the Carolina Panthers on Sunday as they defeated Sam Darnold and the offense 24-6. The Patriots' defense came up big as they were able to intercept three of Darnold's anticipated passes. Key players of the game being cornerback J.C. Jackson and returner Jamie Collins. New England will welcome the Cleveland Browns to Gillette Stadium this Sunday for a kickoff set for 1 p.m. The Celtics are currently 11th in the Eastern Conference standings, and I think we're all still a bit curious about what to make of the team this season. Boston's current record only stands at 4-6 as they head into their matchups against the Raptors, the Bucks, and the Cavaliers over the next few days. The Bruins are off to a decent start this NHL season, as they are currently 6-4 in the Atlantic Division. The team's captain, Patrice Bergeron, had a stellar game against the Detroit Red Wings, as he scored the majority points, bringing in four goals, contributing to the team's 5-1 win. The team's star left wing, Brad Marchand, is the most notable player on the team right now, as he has 10 assists and four goals on his resume for the 2021 season thus far. Well, that's all we have for you today for a New England sports update. Reporting for MCTV Sports, I'm Nicole Fasciano. See you next time, Warriors. 
Thanks, Nicole. Hopefully the Pats can ride the momentum into a win against the Browns this Sunday. Bruins and Celtics are doing pretty average this season, so hopefully they can figure it out and get a string of wins in here soon. Next up, we're going to send it to Chris Zullo, who's given us an inside look of intramural dodgeball. Hey, Chris. The history of dodgeball is an interesting tale that dates back over 200 years ago. It was not designed to be the fun and competitive spectacle it is today. Originally played in Africa, dodgeball was played with rocks, and the end goal was to strengthen warriors' fighting spirits and their endurance. Some scholars say that it was oftentimes a game played to the death. I'm Christopher Zullo, and today we will be taking a look at the historical sport now claimed by has-been high school athletes, dodgeball. Now, I'm joined here with uh, second out for, what is your team name again? Gym Class Heroes. Gym Class Heroes, second out. Now, how does it feel to be the second weakest link on the team? At least I'm not the first weakest link. Right answer. Not like this guy. Why are your socks tucked in? Pants are too uh, flaily. I don't know. I had to reduce the, the spread, I guess. I'll let it slide. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, we have another mid-game interview here uh, from one of our more active players. Now, let me just get down here. What exactly do you think your best asset is to the team? Um, I'm probably the best player to ever walk in this gym. So, I mean, I, I, don't, I think this team's probably beneath me, realistically, but I'm just, I'm just the best, really. That's pretty much it. Right. I, I mean, I completely agree. You are displaying more athletic ability than any of these runts uh, running around this court, humming a ball filled with fluff. Uh, thank you very much. Now I'm joined here with the commissioner and supervisor of the Intramural Dodgeball League, Brad. Now, Brad, how have your people been doing tonight? So far, so good. Um, I haven't seen any tomfoolery just yet. Uh, we had a forfeit on this court, so not really much action, but I saw what's going on over there. Uh, pretty much the, the way I run dodgeball here is that if they, they say any bad calls, I fire them on the spot. On the spot? Yeah, on the spot. So like. Basically, like mid game, if, if some, let's say, ball doesn't hit you, but they call them out, that's a bad call to fire. I'm going to ask them, just hand me your stripes mid game, too. So, like, we'd be down a ref for that game, but I, I don't care. I don't, I don't tolerate any, any crap like that. That's ruthless. Now, Brad, I have a question. Can I fire people? A absolutely not. So, I just spoke to Brad, and he's not happy with you, and you are fired. He gave me full permission to fire you. Today we took a look at the evolution of dodgeball. What it's become and what the players are comprised of now. Thank you for coming along with me today. Christopher Zullo, as I, conquered campus. Thanks Chris, that was uh, surreal. Well done digging deep into the vast ecosystem of intramural dodgeball. For our next segment, I believe we have a familiar face. We've got myself alongside Mike Legage and Sean McAvoy behind the camera for Fantasy Factor, where we'll give you some tips and predictions to help improve your fantasy football team. Let's take a look. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the Week 10 edition of Fantasy Factor. And look at us, Matt. 
we finally hit the big time. We got new chairs, very nice ones, I might add, much more comfortable. So now, Matt, before we get to our regularly scheduled program, I believe you have an important update to give us. Yeah. Uh, well, guys, I lost. I'm getting pretty annoyed at fantasy football this year. Nothing seems to be going my way. I lost to Sean McAvoy, the, the big matchup. And I'm really not trying to pull any excuses here. I'm just trying to give you some examples of how I mean. Aaron Rodgers is out. I tried to pick up Kirk Cousins and Jalen Hurts off of waivers, both of whom had amazing weeks, by the way, but were taken by other teams higher than, higher than the draft order than me. So I had to settle for Jordan Love, who got under 12 points in his first ever start. Ezekiel Elliott, who I spoke about a few weeks ago as my MVP, had two pretty below average weeks the past two weeks, getting his second and third least points of the season over the last two weeks. Tyreek Hill got me seven points when he was projected to get 20. Wow. All other players played pretty well, honestly, including Renfro and Ingram, who I had to play because Mike Evans and TJ Hawkinson were on a bye. I'm sorry for the rant here, Mike. Mason Crosby also missed two field goals, mm -hmm. getting me negative points. Like, isn't kicking, like, your job? Um, but whatever. I mean, it's just an unfortunate week. So now with that out of the way, let's move on to our start and sit picks <coughs> of the week. Matt, why don't you get us started? My start of the week this week is going to be Devin Singletary, the Buffalo Bills. While he splits time with Zach Moss in the backfield, Singletary gets more of the passing work between the two. With a matchup against the Jets this week and an absolute atrocious loss to the Jaguars last week uh, by the Bills, I have no doubt that Buffalo will bounce back and annihilate their division rival in the Jets this week, and Singletary will hopefully be a big part of it. So my start of the week is Cleveland Browns running back Dearness Johnson, who's expected to start this upcoming weekend with Chubb and Felton out due to COVID and Kareem Hunt still on the IR. Uh, Johnson made the most of his first career start three weeks ago on Thursday night against Denver, running for 146 yards on 22 carries and a touchdown. While Mayfield looked good last week in the 41-16 domination of the Bengals, the Browns and Mayfield will need assistance from the run game in order to squeak out a win against a well-coached New England team. We have Gabby Eckerd with the lineup, where she'll announce some of the upcoming sporting events to look forward to over the next two weeks on campus. Gabby? Hello, Merrimack. I'm Gabby Eckerd, here with the lineup for the next two weeks of Warrior Sports. Starting strong, the women's basketball team will have their home opener Tuesday the 16th at 7 p.m. against Albany. The men's basketball team will play Army away at 6 p.m. on Wednesday. They will also play at home against Lehigh at 7 p.m. on Friday. Saturday the 20th will be the IC4A ECAC Cross Country Championships, and Women's Swim will compete at Simmons University. You can expect a home football game against Bryant at 1 p.m. and a home women's hockey game against Vermont at 7 p.m. as well. Sunday brings more games. Women's basketball has a 2 p.m. away game against Lehigh, and women's hockey has a 3 p.m. home game against Vermont. Men's basketball plays at Virginia Tech at 4 p.m. too. Tuesday the 23rd rolls around and we get more action with a 7 p.m. men's hockey game at Holy Cross and a home men's basketball game versus Hartford at the same time. On Wednesday, the women's hockey team will head to Brown for a 3 p.m. game. Saturday the 27th, you can look forward to a home women's basketball game against Dartmouth at 1 p.m. to be followed by a home men's hockey game versus Union at 4 p.m. To wrap up your lineup, the men's basketball team will play at Boston University at 1 p.m. on Sunday the 28th. For more information on how to follow along or purchase tickets for these events and more, check out MerrimackAthletics.com slash calendar. I'm Gabby Eckerd. Back to the studio. Thanks, Gabby. Lots of good things to look forward to over the next couple of weeks. All right, everyone, that's all the time we have for on the Warrior Walkthrough today. Stay tuned for our Campus News episode next week and another Warrior Walkthrough in just two short weeks. As always, thank you guys for watching. I'm your host, Matt Gagnon, and we'll see you next time.